ever just get carried away with something and not really think it through? Yeah, most days actually, <laughs> most days. In this video, we're gonna be fitting some nice shiny new posh parts to the E46 M3. This video was made a little bit different to previous garage videos. There's not a lot of me talking on video, so it's gonna be a lot of voiceover walking you through what I was up to. Now, first of all, I got a new boiler suit. My granddad found this in his loft when he was clearing out. Genuine Benuin, yep. Uh, I already got it covered in grease straight away, but yeah, quite nice to have some overalls. And the first job that I'm gonna be doing is fitting some new subframe bushes. I decided to go for solid aluminium ones, and these are VAC Motorsport ones, which are slightly shorter than stock, which should raise the roll center. What is roll center, I hear you ask? I don't know. I'm sure Holmes could tell us maybe sometime next year. But for now, let's just roll with it. I figured because my car was lower than stock, these weren't a bad idea, and I've seen a few people running them, so those are the ones I went for. So as you can see, I had the subframe powder coated as well, just a flat black. We've got a lot of parts to fit in this video. I'm gonna put a list somewhere, maybe here, just to give you an idea. So I didn't have many issues installing the subframe bushes. I did expect it to be a lot more difficult than what it was. I saw a lot of people online saying they had to freeze the bushes or they had to heat up the subframe or vice versa to get these uh, sort of bushes in. Now you're all right. Yeah, I just pulled them in on uh, a threaded bar and, and they were fine. And no issues whatsoever. I think it helps that the subframe steel. You'll see in a future video what happens when you're pressing in aluminium bushes into aluminium. I had a bit of a bad time there, but that's not in this video. So the next thing that I got sorted out was the wheel bearing. So as you can tell, I've had the trailing arm powder coated as well. So I fully stripped this before sending it off, got rid of all the bushes, got rid of the old wheel bearing. I decided to buy the same wheel bearings as what were fitted to the car, which were FG. I can't say what it says, haha, ha, funny name. So that's what bearing was fitted to my car from the factory. It's a famous old German make, so not too surprising. I didn't have too much troubles with the wheel bearing, although the tool that I'd bought to remove the old ones and install the new ones, the thread started to knacker up on it. This was actually my fault because when I was removing one of the old wheel bearings, I forgot to remove the snap ring. So yeah, this is all my own doing. I've had a lot of luck with these cheaper kits. The only time they've ever gone wrong is usually me. It's usually operated error, which gets in the way of these performing as well as what they could. And it's usually just the threads that get damaged when I've, you know, for example, forgot to remove a circlip or, or something similar. So I'm looking for my thread file now. It's not in the toolbox. It's not in the travel toolbox. No idea where my thread file is, but luckily I know where there is one. Hello, motherfucker. So I managed to get the threads cleaned on the tool. And then I decided to clean out the bar of where the wheel bearing sits. When it came to pulling the bearing in, it took me a few attempts. I was worried that I might pull it in too far and damage the bearing. I have actually done this before. It was one of the first jobs I ever did on any car ever back in the day on my first E46. No idea how I did that. I definitely didn't have the tools to do it, so I must have begged, borrowed and stolen them. But It took me a few attempts to get this right. Once I could get the snap ring in, I knew the bearing was seated properly. Won't turn. That must be it. It did go a little bit, I think. Now you might notice that the ball joints are already installed in the trailing arm. If you didn't know, the E46 and E36 M3s have these ball joints 
in the upper and lower parts of the rear trailing arm. I think the lower one on the non-M models is normally a rubber bush, but you can just fit these spherical joints. Now we're actually not going to be refitting any poly bushes or any rubber bushes to the rear end of this car now. It's going to be fully spherical or solid mounted. Well, other than the D bushes for the anti-roll bar, that's going to be the only thing that isn't solid mounted. So yeah, the rear end should feel pretty good after this. Once I got the wheel bearing done, it was time to get the hub flanges ready. Now when you press these flanges out of the bearing, when you're stripping the trailing arm down, the inner race from the old wheel bearing is going to stick to the flange. Now I wasn't 100% sure how to get this off. In the end, I decided to go for destruction. So I put a slit in the inner race with the angle grinder and then tried to chisel it out. It was a bit of a long process, to be honest. It took longer than what I was hoping. I think it's one of those times where if I would have thought a bit more about what I was doing, then maybe I could have done a, a better job of it. But once I started getting in there with the chisel and hammering, I was just, uh, yeah, I was quite content to be fair. So maybe it wasn't all that bad, but definitely better ways of doing this. I also decided to clean up the face of one of the hubs. I'm not too sure why I did this. It's not exactly my speciality to make things super clean and it's not at all what I'm aiming to do here. I'm not aiming to make, you know, an Instagram build or anything like that. I don't know why I did this, but I only did one side as well. I think I was just playing with this um, paint remover wheel just to see what it did. Um, but yeah. It, came out quite nice I guess. Of course I had to get a wire wheel in the center as well to make it match. Um, I'm fairly confident I only did this to one side. I don't think I did it to both so that tells you all you need to know. Then I went to install the flange into the wheel bearing but thankfully I didn't do that because we're missing one vital piece. One piece that was restored, that was uh, saved from the bin. Oh, how can I stay mad at you? Yes, the backing plate needs to go on first. Now, I would normally vote to sack these things off, but one, mine was still in reasonable condition under all the rust, and two, you need this to mount the parking brake hardware on. Now, I'm not sure what direction I'm going to go with the car yet, whether it'll be a full balls out race car or whether I'll still want to run it on the road. At the moment I'm thinking I might still want to run it on the road occasionally so we're going to keep the factory parking brake. The dust shield came out really well. Not perfect by any means. One of them has got a small rust hole in it so they're not going to last forever. But yeah you need these mounted to mount the parking brake shoes to. So without the backing plate you won't have a handbrake. The next bit of fun is going to be the brake calipers. Now when I had the subframe and other bits powder coated, I had these calipers blasted. If you can't remember what they looked like before, they were pretty minging. They were super rusty and corroded. 
and given that we just had such a great time rebuilding those brake calipers on the Civic, I thought I'd have a go at giving these a little restore, but also painting them at the same time. So this was my homebrew little rack in the corner of the unit. Far from perfect, but perfect from afar, maybe. But these are good to go now. They've been zinc primered, uh, painted an aluminium color, basically silver, right? And I think I even put a top coat on them, so I know, right? Fancy. But our task for now is going to be to strip these down a little bit more. We need to get rid of the old piston, get rid of the old brake line, and then we can start building these back up with the new pieces that we've got. Now you can't really tell from this video, but I absolutely battered my fingers here. They were really hurting after this. Um, yeah, be careful popping pistons out that have been in there for 20 years. They can come out with some force. You can see me here on the second one trying not to get my finger in the way. <laughs> wow. After that, it was time to clean the bars and change the seals. On one of the brake calipers, no matter how many times I tried, I couldn't get the dust boot to seat properly. So I ended up popping the piston back out. And then had another go at cleaning the inside, basically just scraping away with a screwdriver or a pick or whatever. Now I did find a little bubble of paint in here, so I scraped that away, gave it another clean and tried again. Yeah, that was it. So the boots and seals are installed on both calipers now. Now came the task of getting rid of the red rubber grease, which gets everywhere. Now I could have probably soaked these in brake cleaner, but after just painting them and spending quite a few hours on it, I didn't want to go too savage just yet. It's done. Next to install were the boots that go around the slider pins. So I got new ones of these. These were very easy to install. I just put a bit of grease on and popped them through by hand. And that was it. A pair of brake calipers ready to go back on the car. The next job I decided to undertake was trying to get the subframe in place. So I'm not going to build up the subframe on the floor and try and install it on one which is what I did when I removed it. I'm gonna install the subframe first and then put the arms on and then install the diff, etc., piece by piece. I think trying to install it in one go would be too much effort. Although I did do this previously, I think with having solid bushes now, things will be a little bit more difficult. And I'm very glad I did it this way because I immediately got into some problems.
So what happened was a, a bit of a red flag really. The holes within the bushes in the subframe didn't completely line up 100% with the holes in the car, with the bolt holes. Oh dear. So that's not ideal, but I did note that there was no kind of leeway in the bushes. I noticed on my poly bushes that one of the holes for the front bushes was elongated slightly, and on the solid bushes that wasn't there anymore. So I'm guessing that has something to do with it. Obviously, if you know E46s, then that is alarm bells. We do have the strengthening plates, but perhaps something's not 100% internally. I do plan on having a full cage fitted to the car eventually, so when that happens, I think it'll be time to cut open the floor in the boot and see what's going on. But my way around this was to loosen the studs, and that gave me enough kind of give to get the subframe on. And then I had to tighten the studs up with the subframe slightly attached, which was a pain in the ass. So my original plan for the spring seats and the brake calipers was to have them aqua blasted. But when that failed, I thought I'd invest in the equipment myself. So you might have seen these machines before. These are the finger machines. Um, they're quite popular. I'm thinking about setting up my own business, blasting other parts with the finger machine. So if you want to get a quote, just email me fingerblasting at dannydc2.com. The next task was to install the spherical bushes into those spring seats. So I'd already removed the bushes ahead of taking them for what I was hoping to be some aqua blastings, but obviously that didn't happen. Now one thing to note about these is that the bushes stick out slightly more on one side. I realised this when taking them apart and thankfully took some pictures, otherwise I would have been crying on Google for a good half an hour here. So yeah, once again, I'm, I'm not installing these with a press tool really, I'm just using feathered bar and, um, you know, sockets and, and, and whatever. I have bought a couple of kits and, you know, just use them. But yeah, every bush installation and removal whilst doing this job from the start is, I've never used a press at all, I've always used just these feathered bar kits and... Yeah, I've been able to do everything. I would like a press for sure, but I've got so used to using these things now that it's very rare that I actually need one. The next thing I did was to clean up some bolts. So all the bolts under the car, a lot of them were replaced a couple of years ago when I first kind of fitted the subframe strengthening plates and all that jazz. And it's crazy how quickly these bolts go rusty, especially, well, definitely because of our climate. But anyway, I wasn't gonna waste my money buying bolts again. So I decided to just clean up some of the threads and I cleaned up some of the heads as well and some of the bolts, but, but not all, I, I got bored of that quite quickly. Like I said before, I'm not after making the, the cleanest you know, eat, eat your dinner off the underside of my car, build with, you know, titanium shiny bolts or anything like that. The main focus of all this work is to have a solid rear end, you know, with spherical bushes instead of rubber or poly. We're getting rid of all the poly bushes and going spherical or solid mounted. That's, that's the goal here. Obviously, I'm making things look a bit nicer at the same time, but that's mostly just to uh, kind of preventively keep the car from rotting away. Um, we're not doing a completely show and shine build, but you know, some things will be nice. 
So we're all about the mechanicals here, which is an interesting thing to say just before tapping out some locking nuts. Now I didn't realize these were locking nuts. I, I kind of did, but I thought, ah, they'll be all right. Um, yeah, they, they, these are pretty rough and I thought oh, I'll just clean them up with a tap, but in doing this, it ruined the self-locking of the nuts. I didn't realize until I installed them and, and they installed super easy, which was nice, but obviously they're not doing their intended function anymore. Um, I ended up replacing all of these nuts, you'll see that later in the video, but the bolts stayed good. So one thing I didn't do with the subframe off the car that I wish I would have done is made sure that all the balls where the bolts go were free of paint. So obviously this has been powder coated and we're sticking these M12 bolts through the balls and yes, yeah, some of them were um, so covered in paint that I couldn't get the bolt through. Now for the bottom two holes, that was fine because I could get the drill in, but for the top two, I couldn't get the drill in, so I had to improvise slightly. Maybe a right-handed drill would be, would be ideal here, but you can also just use the almighty Nipex. <laughs> Nipex. And yeah, I wasn't actually taking any metal away here. We're just cleaning away paint, so it wasn't that hard of a job. The paint was also quite thick inside where the inner bushings go. I ended up trying to tap these in with a dead blow hammer, but in the end I had to get the sandpaper out and take some of the material away, which was kind of annoying, of course, because then I had bare metal where I didn't want bare metal, then I had to paint. It, it was a bit of a pain in the ass, but yeah, I, I got it done. I don't think I videoed much of that. Let me in. Let me in. So the rear end is mostly together now. I didn't video it, but I've installed the trailing arms, the camber arms and the spring perch. So remember everything's spherical. It's Bimmer World bushes on the trailing arm and then it's PMC on the uh, rear arms between the subframe and the trailing arm. Articulation, very nice. But you might have noticed the barn quite messy. Yeah, I'm gonna have a 46 minute clean up now, but I forgot to turn the head cam off. So here's a little montage. <laughs> Can you help me? So I got the trailing arms fully assembled off camera. I'm pretty sure I videoed some of this, but I must not have done. Um, I was going up to the barn quite often in the evenings after work and just getting bits and bats done because I was trying to get the car ready for the Nürburgring. Spoiler alert, the car is still on the ramp now as I talk to you. But yeah, as you can see here, the trailing arms are assembled and here's a little demonstration of what spherical joints look like so all the bushes are tight on the rear end obviously there's no spring or damper this is just showing the articulation of the arm now that everything is spherical so everything is on a, a ball joint basically right so this is really cool i think how does that make you feel mr polybush 
So up next it was time to install the brakes but before we do that we need to fix the hydraulic line. So what I did in a previous episode was try to seat two male DIN bubble flare ends together and it didn't go so well. Oh god! So we've got some kind of joiners to go between them now which is the correct way to do this. So that was the first job, getting that installed. And then it was time to cut the brake lines and get them ready to fit the new flexes. Also special mention to Hell for sponsoring me lately. I've been using Hell lines on my car for a while anyway, but they reached out recently wanting to support the channel. So thanks for that. In my BMW parts bag, I actually had a new pair of brackets for the flexi hose at the rear. I tried to change these and the rear lines a couple of years ago and realised I couldn't because they were like corroded and ended up just leaving it, but yeah, it's time to get these on. The only slight issue I had was that the, the glue seems to have really stuck on the sticker and in hindsight, I should have just left it on there. I should have just left the sticker alone. You know what it's like when you start peeling a sticker and once you start, you've got to go all the way, right? So, yeah, I just ended up burning it off. Now, this is something that I hadn't done before, so I was um, a little bit shit at it, let's say. I thought I'd put the wrong fitting on to start with, so I took it off and put one with slightly longer threads. But what that resulted in was this. I found it very hard to connect the flexi hose with the shorter threads. And with the longer threads, obviously, it wasn't clamping down on the spring clamp. Anyway, this was one of those USB tasks where you, you do it wrong the first time, correct it, but no, it was actually right. So there's only two ways to do it, but you end up doing it three times. Anyway, the next thing to install was the parking brake. So this is a drum brake set up, operated by a cable. All BMWs since forever have been like this. I'm pretty sure they still are today. Correct me if I'm wrong. So it clamps into the internal bell of the disc. And yeah, I didn't buy any new parts for this. We're reusing everything, which in hindsight, I could have saved myself quite a bit of hassle if I'd have got new cables and new parts, but I didn't want to spend the money. So we're reusing it. So now that we've got the drum brakes on, all sorted out and working, I'm going to install the hub flange. When I say working, of course, the drum brakes were untested because we've not put a disc on yet, but all the parts are there. So I'm going to use my wheel bearing tool once again to pull this in. I don't think I videoed this, but I realised that this side that we're working on now, the driver's side, I did my usual trick, what we saw at the start of the video, where I didn't pull the flange all the way in out of fear of damaging the bearing. How did I notice that? Well, when I put the disc on at the back, it didn't line up properly with the caliper carrier. And I was head scratching for a little while before I realized what I'd done. That might be later in the video. I can't remember if I, I caught that or not, but. Yeah, this was all pretty stress-free. I mean, I was stressing of whether or not it was time to put the flange on yet because I knew that once this flange went on, you know, you're not getting it off again without the bearing going with it. So yeah, I just had to get on with it. This was also where I noticed that the mating surface for the carrier was painted. At the minute it feels like the parking brakes kind of stuck on a bit but it's in the maximum off position so maybe it's but the cable's only just in as well so we'll come back to it 
Now came for a bit of fun with the drum brakes. So one side went on just fine, but this side, the passenger side, this is the one which had the GAMI handbrake cable. And yeah, I messed about with it for so long. What was happening was the parking brake cable was applying just the tiny amount of pressure which was expanding the shoes so much so that I couldn't even get the disc on. Now I had them contracted all the way on the adjuster wheel but still couldn't get them on and it took me a long time to figure out a method of getting this installed properly. I think ideally I should have replaced the cable but I got it on there anyway. You may also notice the backing plates got a bit bent. Um, I'm not sure if this was me removing them or not. Probably when I removed the subframe from the car. But yeah, it took quite a lot of fiddling about, a few tippy taps with the hammer in the right places to make sure that the dust shield, the, the backing plate wasn't catching on the disc. But that was fun. I better use my strong hand. Sound. So the next day, a parcel arrived from BMW. In here were some nuts, bolts, and some clips that I needed to finish off the rear end, but also a present for the front end. So you may remember the black M3 came with some black grills and when I drove that car around a little borrowed the chrome kidneys from the blue car. Now I did try and purchase some grills, some genuine second hand ones online but the clips were always broken and one of my mates gave me a set and the clips were broken and I thought about buying some non-genuine ones which would have been about half the price of the genuine ones but reading forums online people said don't really bother with the non-genuine ones so yeah, these are about £100, but I think well worth it. So I got some new hardware for little bits around. The rear tool bolts that go into the diff are actually torque to yield. 
or they, they certainly have a an angle on them. I think it's something like 20 newton meters and then 90 degrees or something like that. And so I ended up getting some some new bolts for them. I also got some new brackets for the anti-roll bar bushes because mine were pretty manky and I, I forgot to take them to the powder coaters. And by this point, I've got a bit sick of painting things in the freezing cold. Another thing that I bought recently was a pressure bleeder. I've seen loads of people using these before on, on the VAG cars and the BMWs, but when I've been racing the MR2 and the Civic, I've always had to either manually bleed brakes or piss about with a vacuum bleeder, which I do have some success with, but I've wanted to try a pressure bleeder for a while, and now it was time to try the pressure bleeder. So how this works is you have a pressure bottle up front, which you pump like a, like a bike pump. So this creates a pocket of air pressure above where your brake fluid is in the reservoir. And when you crack open a, a bleed nipple, um, for example here on the, on the rear brakes, that opens up a gate for the pressure to escape. And it really did make bleeding these brakes after just having brand new lines and being sitting for months, it made it an absolute doddle. Obviously this was the, the cheapest pressure bleeder on eBay, I think I paid about 25 quid for it, so how long it will last, who knows, but yeah, I was dead impressed with it after the first go. Both rear calipers bled up without an issue. The next job was to reinstall the wheel speed sensors. I ended up buying some cheap, I think they were Rydex branded ones, so I'm not sure how these will be. I had to destroy the original ones when I disassembled the trailing arm. They were just completely seized in and I, I tried and tried to get them out cleanly, but no, they had to be destroyed. These were about £20 for the pair. I think a decent sensor is between 30 and £40 pounds on its own. So we'll see how these go. I mean, it's, it's a simple sensor really, so... I'm hoping they work okay. Obviously I don't use the traction control and the ABS system on this car isn't the best, but it would still be nice for it to be there. Now in my package from BMW were some new clips for these wires to attach to as well. So this ended up being a nice clean job. Now to finish up this video, we're gonna be cleaning the coilovers up a little bit. If you don't remember, one of the main reasons why I bought the Black M3 was because it was fitted with these Bilstein Club Sport coilovers, which are a very expensive coilover, but the car spent some time in Scotland, and they're only a couple of years old, and they look like this, so I decided I wanted to try and clean them up best I could. So here's a comparison of a before and after. So the coilovers are coated with some anti-corrosion stuff, but as you can see, Wherever the car was driven was far too strong for those properties. I tried to clean around the stickers. I could probably get some new stickers to, to replace them, but I decided I'd try and keep them original-ish. I didn't want to go down to bare metal and have to deal with them going rusty again on the car. So I did consider painting the bodies, but in the end I decided to just clean them up and then I've coated them with some ACF 50, so we'll see how that gets on.
Now I got a present recently. Um, I said my granddad was cleaning out his loft, right? Well, this is a grinding wheel from West Germany. Yeah, yeah, right. A bit of um, a bit of history from from the Germans. Now I've wanted to have a bench grinder for a while, not just for the grinder, but also to install a wire wheels. Now I had a few parts to clean up on these coilover, which would have been a, an ideal moment to have that wire wheel on the bench grinder. Uh, I didn't have, so I had to get a bit DIY. And this worked fine off camera, but as soon as I turned the GoPro on, it was uh, it was not happy. Could actually do with another pair of these if anyone wants to donate some. Any friendly f friends out there? Anyone got some spares? Come on, you've all got these kicking about. Don't make me buy new ones. Well, now it was time to install the coilover, install the spring. This is when I realised that I'd forgotten about the spring adjusters. They also needed to clean and a tidy up.
You might notice the base of the coilover where the bush is hasn't been uh, treated, hasn't been cleaned. Yeah, I was meant to do it whilst it was on the car, I just kind of forgot, so... <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't planning on using these, but I think I got her. So I was going to buy some new ones, but I think I'll just clean them up. I've already placed my order with BMW and I, <laughs> I had a fun time. I, I basically ordered too much already and I already cut the price down loads, but I still ended up I only needed to order some clips and I ended up getting like a 400 pound bill. So, I, uh, <laughs> and that was without these, um, but I, I rejigged the order, but I still managed to spend 200 pound. Yeah, we'll uh, clean these up and paint them. Yeah, remember when I said I was done painting things in the cold? Well, these are the cups that go on the rear bushes of the subframe. And I didn't think with the new bushes that I was going to be reinstalling them, but for whatever reason, the, the rear subframe, we talked about the alignment of it. Yeah, long story short, I was going to have to reinstall um, these bolts with these washers. So I gave them a clean up and yeah, it went tits up for some reason. Once I put some lacquer on, they went all cloudy. I didn't need to bother putting lacquer on anyway. I don't know why I did that, but yeah, paid the price for it in the end as well, so that was nice. But yeah, I ended up just installing them. I couldn't be bothered sanding them down and painting them again. But yeah, that was it. That was the final touches. So we're all back together now. All that's missing is the differential and the drive shaft. But we're going to be doing a little bit of a refurb on those parts, and that's going to be a video on its own. Messing up the colour temperature, rust. All right, well, that's another episode done. Got a lot done in this one, a lot of nice things back on the car. It's got brakes again, it's got pretty much a rear axle again. All that's left really is a differential and the drive shafts. Gonna do a little refurb on them. We've got some new plates for the diff as well from a company called Racing Diffs. Yeah, we're gonna have a little mini rebuild. So we're gonna put the 3.9 back in this car, but with a little refresh. And we're also gonna refresh the drive shaft, the axles. It's been a good day today. I even got this found a, a hat which matches the uh, matches the new overalls. So I'm having a good time. I uh, hope this has been good to watch. It's nice to put some nice things back on. Obviously, everything is not that perfect. Uh, I can imagine there might be people saying, "Why didn't you just get new bolts and all that?" But come on, I did get new nuts in the end. That was a mistake. Tapping those nuts out, they were locking nuts. Duh. If they just get carried away with something and not really think it through. Yeah, most days actually, <laughs> most days. But yeah, the car's not too far away. We've definitely missed the Nürburgring. If you remember episode one, back in the day, that was August, it's November now. Today is actually the last day that tourist Harten, that tourist drives at the Nürburgring are open. It's Sunday the 12th. Yeah, Sunday the 12th of November today and it's the last day of the Nürburgring. I thought at the very least I'd make that one, but well, anyway, next episode, diff and drive shaft refurb. I'll see you there.